and then you can come back on a weekly basis. We uh we have to shut the uh the guest participation in the uh in the chat. We have to shut that off because we have some problems with uh a couple of losers coming in on a weekly basis. So uh they ruined it for the rest of you guys. But uh talkshoot dot com um go there and uh you'll be able to log in and chat. I know you guys can't talk right now but you can uh you can listen live. So go over there, register and uh you'll be set on a weekly basis. After that, we had um, Chris Jericho and Big Show came out, and they were trashing the celebrities, and uh, that was a cool little segment. And then they had the match against Crime Time, which nobody really cared about. So, Well, the deal with that is, I mean, unified tag team titles, I mean, what makes more sense? You know what I mean? To put Jericho and Big Show on all three shows, not necessarily ECW, but on, uh, on Raw and Raw. SmackDown. Yeah. You know what I mean? On a weekly basis. I mean, does it make more sense to put those two, Jericho Not even as much show. Big Show. I think they just really want Jericho on both shows. And right. I mean, I mean, Jericho. I mean, originally, he was the tag team champion himself. He just had to find a partner, right? So, I mean, yeah. They just wanted Jericho on both shows. I was so worried they were going to – I thought the match at Raw was for the titles, which we'll get into later. I thought they were that Jericho was no longer going to be on Raw. I was I – was, you know, I did too because the, the I mean the way Mayweather puts that well well basically I think what Mayweather said is MVP was going to go out find himself a tag team partner and then if they were victorious on Raw they would get a rematch at the uh, at the pay per view. Well, what together. they did was MVP said um, he said that he's sick of them being on both shows just because they got the unified titles. It'd be nice if somebody beat them and they'd be stuck on SmackDown and nobody at Raw would have to deal with them anymore. Right. And then right. Mayweather said something then, and uh, MVP said, well, if I can find a partner, will you make the match? And Mayweather said, yeah, we can do it tonight. And that, that's yeah. where people got the impression that it was for the titles. But, yeah, it was for a, a shot at the titles at breaking point. Right, right. Well, uh, we're, we're going to run down Raw here. Probably. But anyways, yeah, Chris Jericho and Big Show defeated Crime Time. It was a decent match. I mean, considering it was Crime Time in there, you know. Uh, Jerry well, well that, like, like I said, man, it doesn't make sense. I mean, crime time on on all three TV shows. You know what I mean? It makes more sense with Jericho. I mean, Jericho is probably the best in the business right now. I would I would think. I mean, he's, he's as damn as good. As, yeah. Yeah, as far as uh, at least WWE wise, you know, maybe he had me jacked at Raw last night. We'll talk about that later too. Yeah, he's he's the man right now, Chris Jericho. Well, he's got the well, hot the Jericho Mayweather um, standoff on Raw is really what I wanted to see. You know what I mean? Just right when he got in Mayweather's face, I was like, "Oh, it's on! It's fucking yeah. on!" Jericho's about to get him, man. And then, yeah, I was happy. But um, yeah. okay, so Chris Jericho had—I uh, think it was JTG in the walls of Jericho. Uh, he was crawling his way to the ropes. He finally gets the ropes to break the hold, and then Big Show was on the outside, and the referee didn't see it. Big Show hit the knockout punch. And Jericho quickly pinned him to uh, retain the unified. I hate, that. I hate that knockout punch gimmick. It is you know what I mean? goofy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Then we uh, we shot backstage. We had CM Punk. Somebody in the chat room says Chavo Guerrero versus Thorn Spoggle. Uh, how about that, huh? Monday Night Raw. I think it's finally over. We'll talk I about that, I think it's too. over, man. I think it's over with Bourne. But, yeah, we'll talk about that in uh, in hour number two. We had uh, CM Punk backstage uh, promo, basically. This was where everybody's pay-per-view cut out. Direct TV and Viewer's Choice had problems and... It That's was supposed right. to be a That's really right. good interview. Uh, he was holding a script talking about somebody's already wrote the screenplay for the Jeff Hardy story, and he was talking about how Jeff Hardy's everything wrong with the world, and he's the cool ape guy right now. And he said he's going to rewrite the ending to the Jeff Hardy story, and it's going to be a happy ending because CM Punk will be the new world heavyweight champion after TLC tonight. So it, it was apparently really good, but we don't, me and you only saw bits and pieces of it, I think. And, of course, we had that happy ending at the uh, at the end of SummerSlam. <laughs> yes. Well, well, we'll uh, get into yeah. that, too. Don't don't reveal that yet, because we actually haven't said right. a single peep about it yet. And if people just listen to this show, it'll be a nice little cap off to the SummerSlam segment. No doubt. We uh, got, after this, we had uh, Kane defeated Great Kali. You got anything to say yeah. about this? That was the worst <laughs> match on the show. Um, <laughs> right, right. I'm but it was expected horrible. to be. They kept it reasonably short. It was like a four- or five-minute match. So, I mean, it wasn't torture, but it was a bad match. And, um, yeah, I'm just glad it was. I'm just glad it's over with. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have any comments. <laughs> that was uh Kane got the win. He uh he had that I don't even know how to say his name, something sing, Rajing, Ralam, Ramaman, whatever the hell, Roman noodles. Uh yeah, oh, Kane noodles. Kane got that dude, he got him involved and Kali supposedly I don't know, whatever. Kane Kane interfered with that guy and then D D T Kali and pinned him, so how about uh, how about the next match after that? Uh, I mean, really, really made up for. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, yeah, what do you, what do you want? What do you? I got it. I see it in the show file. What the, the you just star say it on the Walk like of Fame? Cool. So yeah, what? Vince, they show Vince McMahon star on the Walk of Fame, and then they recap all the celebrities. So they're trying to make it a Hollywood 
because they're in Los Angeles for SummerSlam, you know, Hollywood, and they're just trying to make it a Hollywood type show with all the celebrities and yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, DX. Well, you got to cover yeah. everything. It's a pay per view. People, I know. People pay money for Vince is Vince's star on the Walk of Fame or whatever it is. Come on, who cares, right? Who cares about a lot of the crap on this show? Come on, man. What are you talking? Well, who cares about wrestling in general? When who cares about I mean, Nancy O'Dell? Yeah, right. You yeah. know, it was funny. we forgot to she mention. She, she was doing the when they first introduced her. She was plugging her. They when they first introduced her, and everybody started booing. They're like, "Oh, now it's time for this crap on the show." So everybody's booing her. They stop booing her, and then they listen. And then she starts plugging her charity, which is for like dead kids or something, and they or autism. And everybody starts booing her while she's plugging the charity. It was so sad, man. I, was, I felt oh, bad I for her. What was it? Was it? Uh, was it? Was I think it was Lou Gehrig's disease. Wasn't some it? some life threatening disease, and she's talking about death and little children, and everybody's booing her. You can't, you can't <laughs> bring that. I mean, come on. You, yeah, you I know. There's a bunch of strong to, wrestling fans. Yeah, what do you expect? Yeah, but you can't. You could bring that anywhere. I mean, they're not. I mean, she's run a not commercial. A, she's not in front of a, a crowd of. Uh, people at a, at a church, you know what I mean? No, she's I mean, not standing at a podium where, you know, newspaper media is waiting to hear her every word for an article. Right. She's standing in the middle of the crowd at SummerSlam with a bunch of drunk, rowdy wrestling fans, and she's talking about charity. Put a little well, video she commercial could have done on that. She could have done that anywhere, you know, and got booed out of the building. Not just mm-hmm. WWE wrestling fans. Yeah. I mean, she could have done baseball that at a concert anywhere. or a baseball game. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, nobody's... Nobody. I mean, sure, it's a, it's a sad thing, obviously, but I mean, you're at a wrestling event, you know what I mean? You're, you're at a baseball game or something. Nobody, nobody, nobody cares gonna, about. Yeah, this is the point know. where this bitch gets to plug a bunch of crap, and we have to put up with it. No, we want to see the show. It's what we're here for. It's what we paid for. Yeah. Crap well, out. they 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 followed it up. I mean, after uh, after the Vince's star on the Walk of Fame was shown. And uh, more celebrities were shown. We uh, followed it up with an awesome, insane DX uh, entrance video. We actually um, put that up on our website. So I don't know if you guys had it at yeah, the uh, competition. Yeah, we uh, we threw it up on our website. Um, a YouTube video of the DX entrance. So hopefully most of you guys got to see that. It is fucking uh, cool too. I mean, it is really. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean that was uh, that was an awesome. They uh, they, they had a bunch out of on the, uh, they had, well, they had a bunch of soldiers come out shooting guns with lights and shit first, and then after that, they had like a super long extension with the music, and it sounded like the band was there live, but I don't think they were. Were they? No, I you no. know when I watched the uh, when I watched, well, it was hard to tell on the uh, on the stream it due to the Comcast like it, issues. Yeah, it sounded like they were live, but when I watched it, uh, I rewatched it on the. Uh, yeah, they YouTube weren't there. Video. Yeah, they weren't there yet. But they had like an extended version of the intro because it was like a super long build up before they came out. You know, like a good solid minute or a half, and they had all the pyro and the guys came out. It's like twenty or army soldiers or something shooting guns with lights, and then the tank right, came out. Not. Yeah, and then the tank came out, and every time they did the uh, the crotch chop, the tank would shoot. Well, they had, they were standing right over the gun, which is the long barrel of the tank, which shoots, and they they got their legs spread right over top of it doing their pose. And every time they hit the crotch chop, the, the thing would blast off, and yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean that was uh, that was awesome. DX versus the Legacy. I mean, like I talked about before, we uh, ran down SummerSlam here. I mean, yeah, that wasn't just a cool top. entrance. That was a, you know, it was a whole good match too. Yeah. yeah, it was one of the uh, top three matches on the show, at least in uh, in my opinion. We Probably uh, the third best. Yeah. How this then? Shawn Michaels hit uh, was it Cody Rhodes, I believe, with a uh, with a super kick. Yeah, pinned him. Yeah, but it was a yeah. I, mean, I don't have the whole finish written down, but there was a lot of uh, false finishes or what do you call it? Yeah, teases and stuff like that. But yeah, it ended with uh, both the guys were down. They finally get their way back up to their feet, and Shawn Michaels hit super kick and uh, pins him for the, uh, the clean pin. But it was a, a legacy definitely got to shine. Like I said, they had their moments, a lot of offense. They they cut HBK off with a lot of super kick attempts and Triple H with pedigrees and got a lot of double teaming in, and they they were having comebacks and. It was a good ass match. It was a great match. Well, DX or no, it was the Legacy that had the uh, the beatdown on the Raw before SummerSlam. Yeah, the so very last show. Expected, we kind of expected that uh, DX was going to go over at the pay per view, but I like how they followed it up. I mean, I know we're going to talk about Raw here in uh, in just a minute when we come back from the break, but uh, they followed it up with Legacy and DX on uh, on Raw last night as well. Well, they added because a new of, element I mean, because we'll, we'll talk about that later in SummerSlam. They added a new element which. I don't know. We could talk about it now. Uh, they had the Brett DiBiase run in, right? And why? The explanation on Raw was that he was sitting there in the crowd. He was just going to watch the show, but he, he couldn't take it anymore, and he had to get in and help. Why didn't he help his brother win his match 
instead of trying to help Randy Orton win it. You know what I mean? Like, well, that was. I mean, that was. I mean, we'll talk about that during the. Uh, I mean, that didn't happen. The uh, Brett DiBiase didn't run in during this match. That was actually no. Important. I know. I'm asking why didn't he? Because he, the explanation he gave on Raw for running in at all during the Orton Cena match was because he was sitting in the crowd and he couldn't take it. He wanted to help. So why didn't he get in to help his brother when Legacy was getting beat by DX? You know what I mean? If that's the logic, it doesn't make any sense. Right, right. I mean, I mean that that Orton versus Cena. I'll tell you what. We'll talk about it here. Christian. Uh, Christian and Regal. I mean, this this I expected could have been one of the better matches on the uh, show. Yeah, you know what I mean. Me too. And uh, I mean, what was it? Eight seconds or something like Two that. New record, Christian eight seconds. The, yeah. Christian hit the uh, the kill switch, and I mean, this came off the heels of well, they did the beat down after. Well, Regal didn't even Regal. get to take his robe off. I mean, he was just standing there in his robe. Christian came out, and immediately while Regal was trying to take his robe off, he hit the kill, kill switch, pinned him. In eight seconds, new SummerSlam record for fastest match. And then, yeah, like you said, after the match was the beatdown. Yeah, they had uh, Regal formed a, uh, a new heel stable on uh, ECW last week going into the SummerSlam paper. Did they have a name? With uh, No, no name yet, but it's uh, Ezekiel Jackson and Vladimir Kozlov, um, the three of those guys on ECW. I'm sure they'll follow it up tonight on um, on the show. I think, I believe it's live tonight, like we talked about earlier in the show, so... I'm sure they'll continue that, but uh, a new stable, you know, it's something new on ECW, you know what I mean? Not that, I mean, with the, with all the new talent that's debuted in, in recent weeks, I mean, not that we don't already have enough new stuff on ECW, but, um, yeah, a new, a new heel stable, and uh, Christian was able to defeat him eight seconds with the, uh, what's the finisher called, kill switch? Kill switch, you kill used switch. to be yeah. the, uh, what, what, yeah, unprettier. Unprettier, yeah. Right, and then we, uh, we had fan access highlights, they, uh, Show the weekend. They actually uh, canceled Friday's event. There was only um, limited things going on Friday night, anyways. Um, but they extended Saturday, so it went from like 9 a.m. in the morning until 9 o'clock at night, or something like that. Yeah. Um, basically, the same thing that they do at uh, at WrestleMania with all they the some matches and little right. sections with superstars and features and do play by play with Michael Cole and all this crap. Right, so we we got uh, we got highlights of that from uh, from SummerSlam, and we moved on. We had our our two main events: John Cena versus Randy Orton for the WWE title, and CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy for the World Title in a TLC match. Orton defeated Cena um, to reign to retain the WWE title. I mean. This was this was crazy, especially it was weird. when uh, yeah. Well, Lillian Garcia fucked up big time with. Uh, I mean, after I believe it was was the first fall. The first I fall, think. she got on the mic and said, "And your new world champion, Randy Orton." And then yeah, that's so awesome. yeah, he was already champion, so there was nothing new about it. But um, and then she said she screwed up there and said, "Oh well, Mr. McMahon said this match must continue," so they restart the match, and. Uh, I think this is when Orton tried to get himself counted out. Okay, that's so right. Orton, himself... Orton left. Orton left he... the ring. Well, the first time, back. the first, the first time the match ended, um, he hit the referee, right, and the referee, and then they called for the bell. So they, he was trying to get himself disqualified. That's when she said yeah, he was the new world so, champion. So it was the DQ, and then she got. She the said he was the new world champion by DQ. So uh, who knows how that even works? Then they restarted the match, and then he tried to get himself counted out, and so he won- retained his title, but he lost the match, and uh, she made him restart again. And then that's when uh, Brett DiBiase, who at this point we just thought was a crazy fan, ran in and attacked the ref right during a submission. Cena had uh, Orton in the STF, and he was about to tap out, and the fan hit the ring, jumped on the ref, put him in a choke, and uh, security bum-rushed the shit out of him, got him out of there, and they stood around looking confused, all of them. Orton, Cena, the ref, all of them looked confused for a solid 20 seconds, I would say. And then they restarted it the final time, and Orton put his feet on the ropes and got the pin and retained the title. So. What a uh, what a weird way to who I mean, They put too much into that. Yeah. Yeah, way too much stuff. I mean it would have been fine if they did the uh, if they did the D Q finish and then, and then the count out well, yeah, and then the count out. Even that I mean, makes sense. But once they went yeah, they went one too many, I think. Yeah, well I mean it makes sense seeing as, you know, what they did on, on Monday Night Raw. We'll have to wait and see what they do with uh Brett 